Whether you're a seasoned seamstress or novice, join us as we unravel the secrets of sewing with denim, where rugged meets refined and every stitch tells a story. With this past Tuesday's release of the Crescendo Jeans, I thought I'd share a few tips on sewing with denim. It's common to hear people say that their machine just can't sew denim. Most of the time, this is due to just not knowing a few tips that help you handle this extremely durable and stylish fabric. A little history just for fun. In the 17th century, denim was created in Nîmes, France, so it was da Nîmes, or denim. And also then, in 1860s, Levi Strauss invented the riveted work pant, and it became a staple of farm and industrial wear throughout the late 1800s and mid 1900s. So it's been around a while. Here are my best tips for sewing denim. One, always pre-wash your denim, maybe even twice. The last thing that you want is a denim project that has shrunk in the wash. Add a can of coke to soften the fabric on that last wash and it will make it much softer. Also, remember to buy a little extra because denim does shrink in the wash. So if it calls for two yards, maybe get two and a quarter just to be safe because it will shrink as you pre-wash it. Number two, use the correct needle. So a number 16 or 18 jeans needle is what is needed for denim. I like Schmetz brand. There are other brands that are good. Class is another one. These are heavy duty needles that will hold up to the thickness of many layers of denim. And that's probably the biggest thing that people do wrong is not use the correct needle. Number three, use a longer stitch than normal. So for seams, I would suggest using at least 2.8 to 3.5. For top stitching, I would use at least a 3.0 or higher. Good quality thread will also go a long way in making your sewing carefree with denim. This is my favorite tip. Use a hump jumper. Don't assume your machine can't handle denim until you try this. And I'm going to show you how in a few videos here. All right, I'm gonna show you now how to use a hump jumper over a thick seam. All right, I've simulated a thick seam here on this denim. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew right up until the presser foot tips. Do you see that? Now, a lot of times it's even thicker than this and what you'll end up with is just, it's, a, it's like your presser foot is putting on the brakes. So what you do is you take a hump jumper which looks like this. And what it's made to do is level out your presser foot. So you can either lift it up and put it like this. But with a thick seam, I tend to use the back side like this and put it right in there. And then you see that levels off your presser foot and you can keep going without any skip stitches or any problem whatsoever. You can also use this to get started if you're like starting on a seam that's thick or even on a knit. So what you do is then at the beginning, you just go ahead and slip that in like that. And then you'll go ahead and be able to start sewing without any issues at all. That really helps with thin fabrics that want to get sucked down in the throat plate. There are several different hump jumpers. So one package has these two and the difference is one is thinner. You see how much thinner that one is than this one. All right, the thinner one would be what you would use if you have a silky, thin fabric that you can't get started without it sucking down into the throat plate 
or if you have a knit that also doesn't want to let you go through. So that's another reason you might use a hump jumper. It's just as good for that as it is thick seams. But originally they were made for thick seams. This one's a little bit thicker. This is for uh, heavier fabric. And then there's also a thing called a Gina jig, and this is made just for denim or canvas. And I don't find I use this one a whole lot, but if you have extremely thick seam to sew over, you can use this Gina jig in the same way that I just showed you how to use the hump jumper. Now I want to show you this little black button that's on a lot of presser feet and how you can use that in the same way that you use a hump jumper. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew right up until that presser foot starts tipping again. Do you see that? It's tipping. All right, I'm going to raise my presser foot. I'm going to push that in and you kind of have to really give it a push and then lower the presser foot and that will stay in. You go ahead and sew right over the seam and it automatically releases when it gets past the thick part. And you have no skipped stitches whatsoever. Point number five is to use a hammer. Another way to make the work your machine needs to do easier is to pound the seams down just a little bit. So here's a little video showing you how to do that. All right, here's another tip if you have a thick area that you need to seam over. Let's suppose uh, you want to flatten this out before you actually sew it. You can actually take a regular little hammer. I have this little pink one that I've had in my stash for a while. Take another piece of fabric, can be anything, just anything out of your scraps. You just don't want to get any residue from the hammer onto your fabric. And you can actually gently hammer that down to where it's thinner and will go through your machine a little better. Now, I'm not tapping as hard as I can because I don't want to bump my camera so much, but you definitely want to just do it lightly because if you do it too hard, you can actually split the fibers and you don't want that. So just go ahead, take a piece of cloth over top, and gently hammer. This isn't a great surface to do it on, but in order to demonstrate, I had to do it that way. So that's another way of tackling thick seams. So I have a few bonus tips for you as well. The first one, when you make jeans or sew denim, this is slow sewing. This is not sewing that you rush. It can be really fun to make jeans if you slow down and take your time. Anyone can do it, really. Another tip is to take note as to whether your pattern requires stretch denim or just classic cotton denim. You can measure the percent of stretch very easily, and there are many gauges out there online. You can do a search and you will find many that you can download and test the stretch of your denim. When you are sewing regular, classic, non-stretch denim, one thing to keep in mind is that it stretches out when you wear it, so it should fit snugly, a little on the tight side when you first put the mom out of the wash. So keep that in mind when you adjust your fit. Don't make them too loose. I've been guilty of doing this myself. And if they start off a little big, they're going to be too big once they stretch out. Another tip is to purchase a rivet press. It is a great investment. Adding rivets are not only stylish, but they also help the durability of your garment, especially at the joints, um, the top stitching, the pockets, those kind of things. Definitely a rivet press is worth the money. And add top stitching thread to a second machine if you have one so that you don't get slowed down by having to change thread. Let me go through just a few of my favorite denim patterns with you. The first two are from Love Notions. Crescendo jeans were just released this week, probably my favorite jeans ever, and I just did a video on that, which I will link in the description of this video. The second one is the Legato jeans from Love Notions, and those are more of a classic jean. They're not a pull-up. They actually have a fly and a zipper, and you're going to really enjoy those. 
also the Tessa gene from seam work and that one calls for non-stretch denim and it's really a great one for that classic cotton denim. I have used that pattern a few times. The Leonora skirt from Seamwork is a great denim skirt that I've made and love, love this skirt. And then my other favorite is this jacket that I can't pronounce from itch to stitch. It's Athena or Athena, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it is a great little jacket, very classic, and definitely a slow sew but worth the time. For Love Notions patterns, there's a coupon code and it updates every quarter. So if this is after April 1st that you're watching, you're going to want to check the Facebook group for the updated code. But for now, this one here will work and it's an extra 10% off of anything that you purchase in, with Love Notions. So I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Maybe throw us a little thumbs up and maybe share this video with someone who might be interested. So I hope you have shed your fears and decided to tackle a denim project. If so, please post them in our Facebook group so we can all enjoy them. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to hold your loved ones close because life is short. Happy sewing.